All right, welcome back to the verdict here on Channels Television. It's election coverage, and of course, we're finished with the first phase of the elections. Now we're taking a look at the way forward. Show? Absolutely. And some of the lessons for us to take away from this election are supposed to be the focus. It seems to be an evening where everyone needs to calm down. At least for a moment, we have a nation and we need to hug it tightly and caress it and love it. Uh, so if you look at this, enjoy some of the outcome of this and let us see how we can move forward. There seems to be some reactions coming from international observers and what they have said. Let me take you to uh, show you some of the things they've said. The European Union elections observation mission, this is what the, their reaction is to the election. They said, and I quote, the elections were marred uh, by operational shortcomings resulting in delays, but positively, there were a number of improvements since 2015. The last minute postponement of the elections and the delay to start voting on February the 23rd plays an unfriendly burden on voters. Let's hear from or uh, look at what the U.S. Ambassador, Mr. Simpson, says. He said that, as noted by many observer groups in their preliminary report, this election was predominantly peaceful and it was proof of the Nigerian people's resolute commitment to choose their leaders. The peaceful achievement of millions was shadowed by the violence of a few. Let me quickly go to our Abuja studio with uh, Mr. Frank Shuaibo, who is the spokesperson of the PDP candidate, Atiku Abubakar. Mr. Uh, Shuaibo, we're going into another election in another few days. Uh, what, what do you have for INEC in improving, perhaps, on the voter turnout, for example? Thank you very much, uh, Sheung. Um, as much as I want to discuss the way forward, I want you as well from the studio there not to mislead the general public. Because from your screen, the topic for the day is a postmortem. And a postmortem means an analysis of what happened before. So if you're discussing the way forward, then you don't mislead the public. And you cannot discuss the, the, the way forward without looking at what happened before. I give Mr. Schwab, Mr. Schwab, if, Mr. Schwab, 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 to, if I'm, we I'm need to, to stay on course, I'll, I'll just a moment, no, no, take, no, just no, a moment. At, let us stay on course, Mr. Something. Schwab, and let me yeah, pilot this conversation the, the because is, that's the reason why we invited you to look at uh, the way forward. First and foremost, we are all Nigerians before you became no a problem. member of a the political forward, party. The way forward is very clear. Absolutely. Go ahead. The way forward is very clear. INEC must exercise its independence. And the, um, independence in, this, in the circumstance here means awarding contracts for card readers, PVCs, <laughs> to party members, non-party members, senatorial candidates in an election does not show that they are what they are supposed to be an unbiased emp uh, umpire in an electoral process. What that amounts to, you understand me? Is, is, to, is, is, make, is allowing a man mark his own examination script, and that is an aberration. It, it's not, it, it won't go well for electoral process. The other one is the, it is the fact that you have, um, is, is the quote from, from the EU observers. The EU observers, you, know, you note that in the morning of, those, of the election, the last election, for instance, in the morning of that election, we received reports of bomb blasts in about two different local governments or two different cities within the Northeast. Where we have, where we have, where this, where this massive nine million votes came from, and obviously the UK and the US gave what we call travel um, directive, travel instruction to their representatives. That nobody, no, no observer can tell you in their report that they went to Bonu or they went to Yobe. You understand? Or they went to Casina. So these people did, did not go there. Voter suppression. You are talking of card readers, use of card readers. Card readers were used in some cities to select PDP strongholds. So when you don't differentiate, disenfranchise people, if you say you're going to use card readers, it should be used across board. It is not a situation where card readers will be used, you know, in, in select locations. And they will not be used in other locations. And that is why you have preponderance of people um, with... Um, uh, legitimate votes in those areas where, we, where they scored 9 million votes and we have what we call um, no, uh, invalid votes of about... Please don't interject. Frank, Frank, can you be uh, uh, getting it wrong? Gentlemen in, in Abuja, gentlemen in Abuja, gentlemen in Abuja, please. Please. I think we all need to calm down. We all need to calm down a little. Maybe we should uh, come to Lagos. And uh, Mr. Daria, you are in Lagos. Yeah. You appear to be a lot calmer uh, in, this, uh, in, this, in this scenario. So 
let me let let us return to you absolutely and uh, and ask that okay going forward between now and march 9 because in all of this we seem to forget that there's another election yeah. uh, uh, which is equally important uh, on 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 the cards what does INEC need to do differently between now and then? What can it do differently between now and then to make a difference, a much more positive difference, uh, a much more positive difference with a view to achieving a better outcome? I, I think, um, before I mention that, it's, it's, impossible, it's, it's important for me to mention to the two gentlemen in Abuja. Their parties are responsible for, both parties are responsible for the situation. And I, and I think that we shouldn't hit the polity at the moment. I think there's another election to go. Uh, I think that we should be very responsible in our remarks and ensure that we do not have this thing spilling over that election. That's first. Uh, like I said earlier, first, I don't think INEC did well in terms of voter education, and I think if it's possible for them to do between now and, 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 and next uh, Saturday, they should do that. Um, the issues around um, accreditation and people who voted, I think we should look looked into seriously. Because the way it was in most of the polling units is that when you do your accreditation, you vote. So how do we find that there are missing votes in between? Immediately you finish your accreditation, you vote. So these are areas that we should look into. Another thing also is the security. I, the impression that the Inspector General of Police gave, uh, uh, I think, last week was that everything was, was secure, everything was fine. But from what we've seen in the presidential election, we've noticed that, th that we're far cry from that. So I believe that going into these gubernatorial elections, that the police should be very, very, very on, on, you know, efficient in whatever it is they're doing. Um, and, and, and another thing also is that we as politicians, we must be very careful that whatever it is, the messages that we're sending out, there must be a message that represents peace. Right. and allows the, 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 the nation to align themselves in that particular way. We, we have a responsibility. Let, let me show yes. you this, Mr. Dania, and that's the response of one of the parts of the speech of the president, uh, his acceptance speech. A, a quote from some of the things that he said, and uh, relating to what he said, and I quote the president, I did say, now that the elections are over and a winner declared, we must all see it as a victory for Nigeria, our dear country. That was why I encouraged my team and supporters in a speech I read earlier today not to gloat. Our God-given victory is enough cause for joy. What I, I, like, you, I like your reaction to on this one. It is say, I therefore want to assure that we will continue to engage all parties that have the best interests of Nigerians at heart. Our government will remain inclusive and our doors will remain open. What do you make of that uh, acceptance speech or the, the statement coming from the president? I think, I think he's taking the responsibility uh, as a president, understanding what the situation is, that it's the, the nation is quite divided, uh, to ensure that everything that comes out from uh, his table or his office is such that douses everything, um, the, the, the tension that we have today. And I think it's, it's, it's a commendable speech. Now, what is important is just not the fact that he said it. He has to back that up as well with action. We have to see that what he's saying is backed up because the first four years we, we, we've seen the kind of mayhem and he hasn't done much. So it, there's the expectations are much higher. Would you per perhaps, your party, ANN, be willing to work with uh, the party uh, that perhaps will get to go into the next four years? For example, if that hand of fl friendship uh, is extended to your party, for example. No, for the, for the better, for the greater good of Nigeria, why not? For the greater good of Nigeria, yes. The ANN is about working to build a new Nigeria. That has always been a mantra, that we want to be able to see a new Nigeria. And so we would all this government accountable all through for the next four years. But, but just so much, again, so that we don't go back and forth, there's just so much that we need to look at from what we've seen from this, the, the past election that needs to be fixed, that needs to be corrected. We can't continue our elections like this. It's just not right. If you had the opportunity to speak to the INEC chairman right here, right now, what would you be telling him about the conduct of last Saturday? I think, look, number one, why we choose professors for the role of INEC, I still don't understand it. And I all due respect to, pro to professors. But if you look at INEC itself, what, what exactly the, the responsibility of INEC is 80% of it is logistics. So usually you should find somebody who has a greater understanding of logistics and get them to be able to fix that. Four years, it's simple, it's logistics. 
You have four years to plan logistics and you don't plan it well. I, I don't know what a professor will be doing unless somebody who, is, who has the expertise in that particular field. So get people who understand it. Get the who and, 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 and those people who know how college is done. And get them involved in this particular process to make sure that we get these things. This thing. We've been doing elections for years. We know, how to, we know that we need to deliver certain materials to different places. How come it's always a problem? Why would we, no matter how we want to undermine or play this down, the fact that the election was moved from the 16th to the 23rd, I can tell you, this numbers we're seeing today would have been different if they did.